Yeah, I've just been thinking these past couple of days, like, with the January 6th trial and then also, like, Roe v. Wade and all these, like, crazy Supreme Court decisions that have come down. Like, it's kind of like God just came down to the Democrats and was like, all right, here's the five things that are, like, the best things you can do elector or that can be given to you from opposition electorally. And they're just completely flat-footed when it comes to responding to all these things. And I just, like, I can't even, like fathom that this is reality like sometimes just like the way democrats are just completely unable to respond just boggles my mind i'm just like how is this real like it just feels like the twilight zone to me i mean i i i think that we as as human beings have um a real inability to imagine incompetence and i and i will say this like there's no doubt in my mind that Demo- the, the Democratic, like, it is harder for Democrats than it is for Republicans. Like I say, Republicans have a virtually homogenous party. They, their agenda is really just two things. To dismantle government and to pay less taxes. And those are actually aligned too. The Democrats have... A whole array of of issue sets that don't necessarily align. They have uh, coalitions of people who don't necessarily align. You know, you get unions who are against, like you know, some elements of the Green New Deal. You get, I mean, you get uh, uh, cross purpose. You know, I mean, it, it it's harder. Yeah. There's no. Let me just say that it's harder. Okay, I want to acknowledge that. But yeah. Also, they are the level of competence that we have particularly with the Democratic leadership, is, I think, hard for people to, to wrap their arms around. And, and, and really, like, you know, I've used this example before. During my Air America days, we would get letters from people who would be like, you must have a secret Republican mole there. Why are you guys doing these the dumbest things in the world? Like, why, three weeks after Howard Stern leaves morning talk radio, would you pull Mark Barron off of morning talk radio? Like, why in the world would you do that? You've just opened up like this huge lane for a nebbishy, sort of like oversexed Jew to be on the radio in the morning. And, you know, self-involved. It's like, the, the, the way I would explain it was like, Coca-Cola says, we're no longer selling Coke as of Friday. We're taking Coca-Cola away and some, uh, you know, Brooklyn based, uh, you know, artisanal uh, cola company goes, well, in that case, we're going to stop selling cola on Friday, too. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And, and it was just sheer incompetence. It was sheer incompetence. Just some moron who thought he knew better than what was already obvious to everybody. It was just sheer incompetence. And we would get letters like this all the time. You must have a mole, you must have a mole. And I'm like, it is a very rational thing for people to think there's a mole here because the level of incompetence, <laughs> I'm staring at it every day. And I can't even, like, I can't even yeah. g- grok it. Yeah, you know, the one through line I will say though, is that I feel like the big tent strategy is kind of coming to a reckoning. And I think that a lot of people at least that I've talked to where just voters and regular people are understanding that there needs to be inner party accountability for people. And then also like, you know, I've also been talking to some people who are centrist and like aren't super into progressive politics and like seeing AOC come out and have a strong coherent message and a response to the row, at least the row stuff um, has been like elevated her to more of a, leadership position and showing more authority in the party and i think that's probably like the one through line that we can point to and be like all right this is how we're going to do progressive politics like this is the this is what we need to emulate if we're going to go forward with this i just saw a and i appreciate the phone call i just saw a poll and i don't know if how you know a poll is a poll uh of the 19th district this is the district that i have been a voter in for 15 16 years now and it's uh upstate um and they did a poll it is the one that uh, uh, uh that antonio delgado mm. vacated uh this district this is the existing 19th district to become the lieutenant governor 
And so there, there's a weird situation where the new 19th, there's a primary, but there is a special election also happening August 23rd. Remember, everybody, primary in New York State for federal offices, August 23rd. Go get your absentee ballots now if you can't be there. And they did a poll. This guy is running. It is a plus five Biden district in, in uh, on-year elections. He's running like two points behind the Republican this year, which is actually not that bad, uh, considering what the sort of like, you know, uh, the perception is. When you include abortion, he's beating this guy by nine points. Um, so uh, that's going to make a difference. Uh, we'll see if, if the Democrats do what AOC is doing, which is put it out there.